Hey, good morning, guys. We are back with another one. Three more commands today. If you haven't checked out the series, I'll link the introduction video to the series in the description. But let's jump right into today's commands. Before we do that, though, give me a thumbs up and please subscribe to the channel if you haven't. I'm really trying to grow this thing, I'm trying to hit a thousand subs, so your help is much appreciated. Let's take a look at the first command. Okay, guys, we're going to use devmgmt or devmanagement.msc, which is short for device management. MSC. Okay, guys, that will launch the device manager application or utility. This is going to show us all of the hardware and devices that are associated with our computer. So if we jump into one of these categories, we'll see all the different devices, in this case, network adapters that are associated with my computer. If I just double click on one of these, that'll open up the properties for the given device, which we double clicked on. In this case, being a VMware Ethernet adapter or a virtual Ethernet adapter. We've got some different tabs here. The first one is general. It's just going to give you some general information about that piece of hardware or device. Next one's the advanced tab. Now, depending on what kind of device, you'll get different um, options within this. So this being a uh, network adapter, we see some different VLAN options, Wacom LAN, Wacom Magic Packet, Wacom Pattern Change. These are all obviously related to an Ethernet adapter. And then this one is pretty consistent across the board of all the different device types, driver. So this is a great place to go to check out the driver that is associated or assigned or installed for a particular device you can get driver details you can update a driver you can roll back a driver if you've happened to update the driver and you're experiencing uh any side effects or you know it didn't work out the way you thought you can always roll that driver back here you can disable the device and you can uninstall the device you got a details tab just gives you a little more information about the device and there's a lot of different options here so when you click on these you'll get different um, values or different information depending on the property that you select and then last but not least we have events so if there were any events logged or recorded for that device they would be um, here in this tab and you'd see a timestamp in the description of the device I'm sorry the description of the event that's a high level of device manager this is definitely a great tool to utilize you've got Excuse me, guys, one second. There we go. If you've got a new device that you've installed and you're not, it's not working, first thing you want to do a lot of times is come to Device Manager and make sure the computer actually sees it. Uh, you may see it as an unknown device or something like that, and you can start your troubleshooting process, maybe update drivers, things of that nature. So very good command and a very good utility. Let's take a look at the next. Alright guys, second command of the day is going to be services.msc. I am a frequent flyer of this one for sure. Okay guys, that will launch the services utility, your application. This is going to give you a list of all the services that are installed or running on your computer. Uh, if you are a system admin or just an IT professional in general and you work on servers, you're going to be in here a lot because um, if your environment's anything like mine, you're not allowed to reboot servers on the fly, obviously, for you know obvious reasons, impact productions. So a lot of times what you'll try is to identify specific services related to the symptoms that you're having, and you'll restart those services as opposed to restarting a whole server. Be careful restarting services. Those can also have an impact on production. But a lot of times that'll be less impactful than rebooting an entire server. So you can come in here and look at the different services. If you right click or if you double click, it'll open up a uh, another box here. So I double clicked on a specific service. This will give me some information about the service. Um, it'll show who it's running under. So local system account a lot of times is going to be your default. You can obviously run a service under a different account. Um, it'll tell you what it does on failure and then if there's any dependencies. So dependencies is basically if you restart this service, 
it may restart some other services as well, right? Or there needs to be specific services running for this one to be able to run as well. So keep that in mind when you restart services, it may restart other services. So you can do that right from here, or you can right click the service itself from the services window, but you can go and stop and start or rest or I'm sorry, restart services. You can do that all from right here, or again, right click the service itself. Startup type manual, um, that would be, it needs to be triggered by something else or triggered by a user for it to start. A lot of services will be automatic or automatic delayed start. And then if you don't want this to run, you can obviously disable the service. So a very handy tool here, guys, is services.msc. Let's take one more look. This is the services window. Again, you can go in here, check the status. Sometimes what I'll do if I'm having issues is, um, sorry, sort by a startup type. And if you see there's a bunch of automatics that aren't running, Sometimes this is an indicator, sometimes it's not, but if you see services related to uh, what you're troubleshooting and they're supposed to be automatically started and they're not running, it's a good starting point. It's not an end-all be-all, but just kind of a pro tip from someone who does this a lot. Okay, guys, the third command we'll look at is appwiz.cpl. This is another one of those very handy commands. It'll save you a lot of time uh, poking around in the control panel looking for uh, programs and features. This drops you straight into the uh, programs and features control panel, which allows you to uninstall or repair or change different applications, as well as just seeing all the different applications that are installed on your computer. So appwiz.cpl is a very handy command. If you're not familiar with the screen, um, this just again allows you to see a list of all the applications and then when you click on one you can uninstall um, or change or run a repair against that application. So very handy command again jump straight into that particular part of the control panel. You don't need to go in there and sort by different icon types and find this. So appwiz.cpl. Alright guys those are our three commands for today. This is the fourth installment in our series of useful Windows commands or commands that you need to know. I'll leave these on the screen for a second, let you jot those down. We took a look at devmgmt.msc, which is our device manager. We took a look at services.msc, which drops us into the uh, service console where we can stop, restart, and check statuses of different Windows services. And then we also took a look at appwiz.cpl, which took us straight to the control panel for uh, programs and features where we can see a list of all the programs and features that we have installed on the computer as well as uninstall, change, or repair particular applications. Thanks for tuning in guys. If you haven't done so, please hit the thumbs up button. Drop me a comment. Let me know what you think. Let me know what, what else you want to see. If you'd like to see different types of content, um, any feedback is definitely welcome. Like I said, I respond to all comments. So go ahead and drop me one. And do me a favor, guys, subscribe if you haven't already. I really would appreciate it. I'm trying to grow this channel to a thousand subs. Till the next one, have a great day, guys, and take care. Bye.